I first met um, Alan in 1982 when I started working for Camden Council as a home help. And to walk down the street with Alan in those days, I mean, you know, everything stopped. Orange vans would screech to a halt beside you, because that's what colour the Camden vans were in those days. The workers, tenants, people would stop, shout, say hello. He was like a mobile surgery. You know, people would stop and, could you, you know, this has happened. And my mate at work, he's getting bullied by his manager, or so-and-so. They don't have the right equipment, they're sending them into the, you know, and immediately he would get stuck in. What is it? Let me take the name. I'll get in touch with it. This is before the time of mobiles, internet, email. He would then have to take their landline, phone them at home in the evening, sort he did have a little pager at one stage, I think he mostly ignored it because that was management, but the fact was the work you had to do even to follow up all of these things was, uh, was absolutely amazing. He was dogged. If somebody had a problem, he was dogged. He would not give up. I'm sure some people will sort of feel the same way. Sometimes it was really drove you nuts. You just say, let it go, Alan. We're not going to win this one. Why, he wouldn't. You know, he would absolutely keep it going. And the boiler section, I mean, it's I'm so glad there's somebody here. I mean, you were notorious, weren't at the boiler section. They were so bullshy. Um, I've got this brilliant letter from my manager, which I hunted to try and find, from one of Alan's managers, complaining, saying, they insist on transport for all their spare parts and tools, even if they're small enough to fit in one of their pockets. This has got to stop, you know. And completely, you know, outraged that this would, uh, that this would happen. Now, I joined the SWP in 1984 in the miners' strike when we were doing the solidarity in Camden. I mean, it just made complete sense to be a revolutionary socialist then. We had incredible solidarity from the borough across all the unions. You know, me and Alan were up in the Camden UP office designing leaflets, stickers, doing the weekly levies. And the generosity, I mean, from UP members, you've got to remember, these are some of the lowest paid workers. Now, I had a payslip, I've dropped it somewhere so people can see it if they believe me. I'd find an old payslip hunting through the stuff and it was like 70 quid and eight pence is what our weekly wage was then. But actually, the generosity was absolutely phenomenal and we drove up in Alan's car I remember the windscreen the steam it didn't work so we could hardly see out the front and went and stayed with the miners stood on the picket lines before dawn it was just I mean anybody else here who's been involved I mean for me it was a life-changing experience and actually working alongside Alan and other socialists in the council really uh, really made it really made a difference and I think you know when people talk about the 1980s and they talk about all the superficial stuff don't they shoulder pads par dressing big hair and stuff for me it was <laughs> placards, mass pickets, donkey jackets, you know. And now, Margaret Thatcher, she's welcoming well, the Labour Prime Minister, takes her for tea. And I think it's absolutely bloody tragic that actually she's outlived somebody like Alan. Because I'll tell you what... to remember the struggles that happened. She didn't get away with things lightly. Many of us and um, people here fought, fought back. Now, Alan taught me how to be a socialist at work, really. You know, it was watching him what he did. And he won respect of people, even if they completely disagreed with him. But actually, because they knew he was principled. They knew he was only fine for one thing. And again, people here might remember, I mean, actually being active in UP at the time, it wasn't an easy thing. Those mass meetings were wild. I mean, you know, sure, remember, I mean, it was raucous. You were shouting and heckling. When Alan would walk to the front, it would be his nickname. Come on, Elvis. Come on, give it to us, Elvis. And uh, he had his, you know, socialist worker out of his back pocket. And, you know, you had to give it to them because actually we had a, you know, everybody was getting involved, whether it's rate capping, the minor strike, strikes over pay. And I think that when you look at the things that he did in the shop stewards committee and things with me as a socialist, he said, you go and sell socialist worker to those when I was just new. He gave me all the easy people, the people he sold to and had sold to for years, you know. But actually it was a way just of getting me, getting me used to, and, you know, he never belittled you. Even if I said or did something really stupid, he wouldn't patronise. He was always encouraging, always saying what we should, what we should do next. And I think Alan always had a plan. There was always a next step, wasn't there? It was always the next thing. And we always had a laugh. Everything we did, we had a laugh. I think Candy and Alan's flat was always a hive of activity. There was always drinks and tea on the go and food on the table for whoever was there. Things were being printed in the office. It was fantastic. And I think when Joe was born, I mean, it's absolutely right, the smile on his face. When me and Caroline Bassett went to visit Candy in hospital, Alan wouldn't give him up, wouldn't pass it. We wanted to carry that, hold the baby, but he didn't want to put, want to put Joe down. And I think just my final thing is, Alan's socialist politics were his core. It was his big ideas about how he wanted to see the world change that drove him to do the small things, the things that many people sometimes intend to do but don't get round to. That's what drove him forward. And there are no small things. He saved people's jobs. He looked after me when I had to disappear off to Belfast for my mum who was sick. He sorted it out with management. No fanfare. 
He just did it. He made sure I could do it and I wouldn't lose my job. And I'm sure there's other people here that owe him for what they did. He made a difference. I think you really can't ask anything else of a socialist but to make a difference. And so I just want to end with something that Harvard Zinn, a socialist historian in America, said about making a difference when you live in a capitalist, capitalist world. He said, what we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many, where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act and at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents. And to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, is in itself a marvellous victory. Well, I think that's what Alan did. He lived in defiance of all that was bad around us, and I will sorely miss him.